Hello, everyone. I'd like to start off to talk about the fact that the NASDAQ reached all time highs at 10,000 for the first time. So the Dow Jones is not alone of having five digits, believe it or not. And who knows, maybe in the coming years and decades, we could see the S&P break 10,000. But I could remember as perhaps a little kid where it broke 5,000 for the first time. So this is a very, very historic milestone. And I know it's very, very hard to believe that in these rough economic times that it's been going up. I've been bullish overall. I've mentioned that in my previous videos and I'm gonna keep telling you folks, even though despite the fact you can see here the NASDAQ is positive and the other two are negative, see corrections as a buying opportunity. I think there's pretty good chance we're gonna have a correction pretty soon. But again, I see it as a buying opportunity. And you can see that it's quite likely we're gonna see a decent correction. Look at the futures. It's not looking pretty and it's been probably this bad for since two to three months. So you gotta keep this in mind. You also gotta keep of earnings in mind. And not to mention there are some fears that are growing because the outbreak number of cases is starting to increase. All right, now let's get back to the major topic. As you know, the election results came along. I've told you in my previous video, I find it very, very fishy that they released the results very, very late, overnight. And this shows that there are issues with mail-in voting, although I've heard some good arguments about it. And as a result, it makes me feel that given the late arrival, that there's a lot of manipulation or some kind of rigging perhaps in these elections. So by the way, manipulation can be against both parties. It usually favors the establishment candidates. So what is really the main concern? Now, I do have a good number of conservatives, right wingers in my channel. And basically, look, primary results are a good indicator of what we're gonna see basically in the coming general election. And what's one indicator? Well, you have to add up the number of votes from the Republican and the Democrats. And once one party exceeds one another, you can pretty much sense that the one that has the most amount is likely going to win the general election. And from what I see here, look, if you total these number up, correct me if I'm wrong, you will find out that this total is exceeding the, the totals for the Republicans. Now, let me tell you something, folks. There are issues I have with Democrats and there's issues I have with Republicans. But the problem with the Democrats here is that they're totally, totally bought and paid for, just like the Republicans. They're not fighters against the corporate establishment. I mean, at least AOC has a lot of issues, but at least she wasn't such a shill against corporate America based on the donors that I see. And the sad truth is they're really bought and paid for by the establishment. So they basically run on social justice, identitarian issues. They basically are pumped up by public employee unions, all these different factors who really just don't seem to care about the common society. And we know that Susie Lee, is totally a huge reflecting matter on that. If you look at her donors, a lot of casinos, I believe real estate, Emily's List, which is funded by Soros, unions, the list goes on. And they know how to run campaigns, they know how to canvas, and they get a lot, a lot of support. Now keep in mind though, Susie Lee had very similar donors and backing just like the predecessor, Jackie Rose, and even Joe Heck. They have very similar donors. So in the long run, it doesn't matter much. This is the thing you've got to really, really understand. Now, I know a lot of you folks are saying, well, look at the recent results of California. They flipped a seat, the GOP, the first time since 1998. And I know that basically the Democrats have gone insane with the impeachment, how they handle the COVID crisis, the rioting, very, very valid points. But again, there's a lot of dirtiness in the state's politics. There's a lot of special interest groups and they're gonna do what they can to continue to pump up the establishment. And I've gone after, you've seen the videos. 
in a couple of Susie Lee town halls, but looking at these totals, it is not looking very, very well. And that's just the sad part. And the bottom line is, look, what matters is, is if we are getting a candidate that is beholden to the people. They focus on the very important issues, the income inequality, immigration that works for the American people, trade, bringing our troops home, not to mention the empire building. You look at Wall Street, the Federal Reserve, they ignore a lot of these issues from both parties. They run on largely certain issues to basically hype themselves up and get elected. Look at this, Stephen Horsford got 16,000 or so votes. It's a lot. It's unbelievable considering that fact that Horsford had recent scandals that's been reported. And even look at Susie Lee. She had a scandal where she tried to lobby to get the COVID money to help out her, I believe, her husband's casino interests. And you look at the challengers. Now, there are things I liked about Sutton, and there are things I certainly liked about Peters, as well as I had some respect for Eason and Gabrielle. But here's the thing, look at the challenger now, it's Jim Marchant, and I am really, really not a fan of Jim Marchant as much as I was with Sam Peters, and that's because I just saw Sam Peters as a guy with balls and enthusiasm to fight Stephen Horsford. But Jim Marchand, look, he lost his seats. He just didn't do a lot of campaigning. And if you look at these totals and the GOP, it's not looking good compared to the Democrats. So District 2, Northern Nevada, I think Republican is going to take it. I think District 1 is going to go to the Democrat, Dina Titus. Now, here's another thing. There are some great Democrats that have actually run, and I want to show you later on. But look, the bottom line is, look, the system is really rigged. And I really see these elections as selections. The elite establishment, the Murins of the world, the culinary unions of the world, they sit in a room, they select our politicians. I see that with Reed, Heller, Sandoval, Sizzlack, Rosen, etc. This is what I really, really see. And this is why I believe we need a bipartisan movement to overthrow the establishment. This is the sad, sad truth that we live in. So what do you guys think? Do you think that maybe we should have a bipartisan movement? Now, this guy is Joe Sacco. He's a Democrat. He was totally against the corporate establishment. By the way, District 16 runs throughout the Las Vegas Strip, McCarran Airport, UNLV. Great guy. I had a lot of respect for him, but look, he didn't do well. But he only got like, what, 250 or so votes? But look who won. This young woman who claims that she is a daughter of immigrants. Folks, this is the thing. This is my main problem with immigration. It's not mainly the jobs, the crime, the welfare use. The main problem, it's a dirty politics. It's for dirty causes, it's for identitarian issues. So they get distracted and get hyped up among certain issues. So it gives power to crony corrupt politicians. Look at how Horsford is getting a lot of support. Look at how the county commission district that runs through it, it's getting a lot of support for a guy who runs on identitarian issues. Same thing with many of these immigrant-based candidates. So they can gain support and they can distract from the main important issues so they can fuel corruption. This is the main concern. This is one of the reasons why California has fell so badly. All right. But on the other hand, you can also argue that it's delivered a lot of division to the Democratic Party. So I want to let you know what you think. And by the way, this young woman, which I'll expose later on, she is a young woman, just like the other young woman, which I've exposed in my previous video. I believe her name is Selena Torres, where they basically use these young women. Oh, I'm these so-called daughter of immigrants. Support me. I'm with this race, that kind of race. So they can basically fuel identity politics. They can use them and they can perpetuate their agenda. And I wouldn't be surprised if she got mass backings from the unions that are heavily corrupt, which are tied obviously to the casino establishment. So the real problem is these unions, these corporations, these special interest groups that are using these folks against us. All right, everybody, thank you guys so much. Please share, please subscribe to this channel. 
and for more solutions about how to get our society going to make sure that we get things done, we make sure that we provide policy solutions that work, please stay tuned.